Hello folks and welcome back to Shogun Total War. I am Kana Step and it's time for another campaign series. This time I will be playing the Hojo Clan. So let's get right on into it. Play game and yes, full campaign. As always, I will be playing on expert difficulty. And here we are, Hojo. All right. So I can read this off to you. The name of the Hojo has a long and proud history. They were once shoguns of Japan, remembered for driving away the Mongol hordes, and they plan to return to their former glory. They do not trust rivals or strangers, but prefer to rely on their fighting prowess, the great wealth of their lands, and their mighty fortresses. Their strategic advantage is that they get to construct castles for lower cost. Well, that is probably the most boring um, advantage or, you know, discount for of any of the clans it's actually very useful you know being able to construct castles at a lower cost because i build castles of pretty much every single province that i have because in um japan there's so many provinces that do border the ocean therefore i get to build a port in pretty much every single province which means money off of that port but to build that port i need a castle first so it's kind of just like a little head start to getting a great economy which for the hojo clan already is good. They already have rich territories, so being able being able to get that jump start for you know cheaper fortresses just makes it you know that much better, I guess. Um, let's see anything else to talk about here. Yeah, so this is the Hojo clan, uh, of course, of the Sengoku Jedi. This is not the same Hojo clan that existed 300 years prior when they fought off the Mongol hordes. This is kind of misleading. It kind of makes it sound like it's the same clan, kind of reading reborn. No, 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 not at all. It's I can't remember the guy's name, but it was basically just like one retainer who kind of took it upon himself to. Um, uh, he, he like led in. I can't remember who he was working for, but he kind of took like a castle in Izu, I believe, and then he just went from there and kind of re rebuilt his own uh, clan, and he named himself Hojo to kind of reinvoke that era that that you know name it's kind of a you know reinvoking the past glory of a once once powerful clan and that's just what he did he, he was he had nothing to do with the previous hojo clan he just used the name to go from there so uh and that's pretty cool it's a pretty cool story because that's essentially exemplifies what the sengoku jedi period was it's all about the if i get the term right it's a gecko kujo which is basically translates into like the, the poor eat the rich, I guess, or the poor rise up, something like that. It's about the fact that you could basically change your class status within this time period by just being, you know, an enterprising spirit to put it in one way, or just being like a murderous bastard is another way to say it. So yeah, you could kind of figure things out and be cunning and devious, and you could kind of make your life a be better in stature, I guess, um, you know, by working your way up. And that's kind of what this guy did. I can't, I can't remember his name. It wasn't, obviously it wasn't Hojo something at first. It was changed to that. So there was an original name and I can't remember what it was. But in any case, I'm going to talk more about the Hojo strategic position once we get into the campaign map itself because I can't really say much here. And I don't think, yeah, I'll just talk about the important nearby resources once we get into the campaign map. But first, we have a cutscene. The era is 1530. For 200 years, the Ashikaga shogunate has ruled Japan from their capital in Kyoto. The recent Onin War has shown that they no longer have the power to control Japan's great clans. The time has come for a new warrior to claim the title of shogun. Japan is divided between ruthless warlords. Armies grow stronger, only to be depleted in the frequent vicious battles that give this era its deserving name, Sengoku Jidai, the age of the country at war. Year after year, the endless plains that divided the clan's territories are stained with the blood of thousands of brave samurai, fighting for their liege lord and for their honor. When necessary, accept help from others, not of our lands. Gaijin can be useful pawns in your campaign, as they bring guns from overseas. If they become a nuisance, they should be expelled from our shores, or even eliminated. When there is no other way, assassination can be instrumental in gaining victory. Even a general who is invincible in battle is as vulnerable as a child when asleep. Use the man of the shadows 
for they excel in the deliverance of death by night. No one is untouchable. Honor is everything to samurai. A man who loses face and his honor must then also lose his head. This is Bushido, the way of the warrior. Follow these rules of wisdom that have been handed down through generations, and your victory will be complete. Japan can be ruled completely by only one man, a great warrior, general, and strategist. To become shogun will require battles to be won with the mind as well as the sword. Now is your time. Let total war begin. All right, well, there you have it. I like how that that cutscene there kind of makes ninjas seem like they're going to play a much bigger part in this campaign than they actually do. They're pretty hard to use because uh, they can just get, they get killed so easily. I've had like a level three ninja, you know, with a 92% chance of success against killing an emissary die, you know, and that ninja costs 200 koku. It's just, <laughs> it's uh, it can be a little bit frustrating. So here we are. Here's the Hojo clan. And... So I have, uh, yeah, these what, six, seven, yeah, six uh, territories right here. And I am bordering the Takeda and the Yasugi. Two very powerful clans. And in addition to that, the Imagawa clan is going to be taking Shinano on turn one. So then I'll be bordering three clans from, you know, from the very beginning. And that can make things a little bit tricky because there's nowhere to expand to without going to war with a major clan, which can make it feel tempting to just kind of turtle up because you do have pretty starting as the Hojo clan you have pretty decent resources when it comes to economy Itachi is making 620 koku base Shimo, uh, Shimosa is 290 uh, Musashi is 640 which I think might be the highest in the game I can't remember and then uh, Kazuke 410 pretty respectable as well and I can't remember, do we have a mine? Yeah, so we can build, uh, we, we have copper deposits in Shimotsuke, so we can build a mine there. And there is iron sand deposits here in Itachi, so we can build an armory here for that bonus to armor. Uh, other than that, yes, so I do have two river provinces, which is nice. Like, Misashi is going to form a very nice barrier between myself and the Takeda clan. Uh, Kazuza, not much going on here, but it does provide a bonus for emissaries. Which is it's kind of funny. Like, it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. First off, this is the only way to get a plus one honor for emissaries as a as a base because there are no upgrades to the uh, tranquil garden. This is it. That's all you get. There's no upgrades to it. So like for ninjas and shinobis, you actually can build upgraded versions of those buildings to, you know, get like plus one or plus two ninjas and shinobis. With emissaries, you can't do that. The only way to get plus one emissaries is th through Kazuza. And, but, but here's the thing. It doesn't really do for you what you'd want it to do for you. The honor for emissaries essentially just kind of lets you survive ninja attacks better. It doesn't give you a higher chance of completing a uh, diplomatic deal at all. And it doesn't really help you out with bribery at all either. And if you've been watching my channel for a while and you've never really played this game and you're just learning about this game through me, then you might be wondering, wait, 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 what did I just say? Bribery? Yeah, I haven't used bribery yet. I have not used my emissaries to bribe other armies yet in this game because, you know, you know, I like fighting the battles, right? Like, that's what you play the game for. But I think there's a fun way to play as the Hojo Clan, which can kind of spice things up a little bit. First things first. This is what I would say is the most powerful clan in the game, but I don't recommend it as your first playthrough. If you are getting into the game, I would say start off with the Shimazu clan. They are more isolated. Once you've pushed the Imagawa clan off of Kyushu, you have, you know, this whole island to yourself and you can kind of push down these narrow tracks of territory and, and go from there. I think the Shimazu has more space to work with, whereas the Hojo clan is probably a better um, second playthrough. After you've played, the, played as the Shimazu clan, either like on easy or normal difficulty, then by all means, give the Hojo clan a try. They are very powerful, but, you know, for sure. It's just that you are going to be going up against three powerful clans in the very beginning, and that can be a little bit overwhelming if you just, you know, if this is your first playthrough. Other than that, they are pretty easy. I will say the opening move 
definitely, definitely, definitely is just attacking Mutsu on turn one. This is the Yusugi clan's capital. And you can attack them with, what do I have? So it's going to be two archers and then one Yari Samurai and then one Yari Ashigaru. It's going to be a somewhat even battle. I think that they're going to have three archers and then one Yari Samurai. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I would... I can't remember exactly. It's, it's kind of a tricky battle for sure. I do have only the one-star general, uh, Ito Masanari, and I can't remember if they would end up with a general or not. Like, because he could move from another province, so I can't remember what the deal is with that. But that's kind of a tricky battle. But as long as that battle is won, then the Yusugi are crippled because they're not going to have the infrastructure that they start with in their capital. Because that's how this goes. You, you basically just have your one, you know, your one province that has a castle and some troop producing buildings. And that's pretty much it. So if you get your, if you lose your castle on turn one, you're kind of screwed. Um, they would still have some pretty, you know, rich provinces in Dewa and Echigo. But, you know, without those troop producing facilities, they, the rest of their territories are going to fall very quickly. Once the Hojo clan has conquered all of the Yusugi territory, it's like, that's like game right there. You know, because these these are the richest territories in the entire game, uh, farming-wise. And there is some mines, too. I think Echigo has a silver mine, yep. I think Dewa might have a gold mine up here. Yeah. And uh, Sado has another iron sands deposit. So there's, there's some really good stuff up here, as well as some good farming land as well. So once Yusugi is conquered, it can be kind of a straightforward push south, right? You know... You fight the Imagawa, you fight the Takeda, you fight the Oda, blah, 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 blah. You just kind of go through. Well, I started doing something, and I just had my playthrough with the Hojo clan last year. So it's a little bit, it's been a little while. I'm, you know, not, I haven't practiced recently, I guess. But I remember what I did. Once I took the Yusugi clan, or once I took the Yusugi lands, what I did was I, I wanted to find a unique way to play this. And I wanted to use bribery, but I wanted to do it in that, like a fun way. So what I did, and I th thought this was pretty fun, was I went after rebels and I kind of bribed them to kind of create these little outposts of Hojo territory that were not connected to my lands. And essentially what you're gonna have is that you're gonna have kind of three outposts of rebel territories. They're gonna hold on you know, against their neighboring clans for a very long time. And that's gonna be the rebels here in Isa, the warrior monks of Kaga, and then the um, the the rebels here in Tosa as well. They're gonna these three places are gonna hold on for a very long time, which gives me time to essentially build up my economy, build up my forces. Uh, I can basically just garrison Musashi, Kazuke, and Echigo, and a little you know I can have f some forces in Sado as well. Protect those four provinces, and then send my emissary out to bribe some soldiers. And once I do that, then I have this little outpost here. And it's not, it's a little bit tricky because they are cut off, right? Until I can actually build a port in that province, which is going to take a few turns. So it's not, you know, it's not like a, you know, you're just pressing a button to win the game, you know, like you just, it's a little bit tricky. There's some things you have to kind of figure out. You have to kind of like maybe bribe some more armies in the, in the neighboring territories to give yourself enough troops to hang on here. You're, there's going to be population loyalty issues if you don't have enough shinobi in the area. So it's it's a little bit tricky, but I had fun with it. I liked kind of creating these little Hojo outposts here in you know, Kaga and Isa and Tosa and just kind of branching out from there. I thought it was kind of fun. So I'm going to try to recreate that. I mean, I know so far trying to recreate things on this channel that I've, I've done in my own time has not always worked. I'm looking at you, Imagawa campaign. But I'm going to go for this again. Starting right off with an attack on Mutsu. Yes, I do want to declare war against the Yusugi. And that's it. So, so I want my daimyo, three-star daimyo. Uh, let's see, Hojo Yujitsuna, 39 years old. Yeah, I can't remember. This Was this the first guy? Was he the first one? If you are aware of the Sengoku Jedi um, history, let me know. And if it, if it is him, I would kind of expect it to be more than three stars, because I thought that would do was like a boss. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I can't remember. In any case, I'm going to send my emissary first things first. I want to just start making alliances with the Takeda clan and the um, soon-to-be the, the Imagawa clan up here. 
Just so I can get that extra alliance money, I'll be making 250 Koku per alliance, which in the early campaign is nice to have for sure. So I have a thousand Koku to spend for the first two turns of this campaign. And what is it do I exactly want to do here? I can't... <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Um, hmm. I think a castle in Kazuke is going to be important. That seems to be a good choice because I don't want to be attacked, obviously, here from the Yasugi. But, you know, that's the thing. There's only two troops here. I don't know where they're going to retreat to. They're either going to retreat to Echi or Echigo after turn one. So, but yeah, I think getting a castle here just so that I can at least retreat to the castle if I do get attacked, that would be good. And other than that, I mean, do I just go for another castle in Musashi? Yeah, I guess. Do I need anything else? I mean, I, that's the thing. Hojo is going to be making so much money off of farming. And, and yeah, I, I definitely should be getting cheap farming upgrades as well pretty soon. But I think I want to make sure I can train soldiers, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll be getting those guys out. Hmm. Yeah, I'll get a couple Yari, or yeah, Yari Samurai, and then like a Archer next turn, I guess. And maybe just do a couple castles and so yeah, I'm paying 187 Koku per ba like a level one castle. That's that's very that's very cheap. So man, that leaves me with a lot. I feel like I can just get another. Like, I can get a farming upgrade, for sure, you know? Um, hmm, should I just do that here in Itachi? Yeah. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. 250 Koku. That'll be good. Whoa, 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 Shimosa is 111%. Okay, that, that's fine. 111 is fine. I've been playing some Medieval Total War, and Yellow is underneath 100%. In medieval, so I got a little freaked out there for a second, but I forgot that in this game, yellow just means underneath 120% population loyalty, which is like, you know, that's nothing. That's fine, you know. Totally fine. Okay. Let's see. I think I have an error. Yeah, he's very close. U Hojo Ujiyasu is just two years away from becoming of age. Hmm. Well, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Right now, my only good general is my Daimyo. Although... This guy is probably going to be gaining a rank after this battle, so I'll probably have a you know two-star general after him, and then Ujiyasu. I can't remember how many stars he is, but you know it'll be nice to have another general on the field. I would like to have him in in a uh, cav archer unit, but I don't know if I'll be able to get cav archers going by then. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's very soon. Two years is a very very short period of time, so I might have to put him in like an archer unit, which is kind of kind of too bad, but. Anything else for me to look at right away? I think that's going to be it for this turn. Taxes put on very low. Yeah, that's looking good. And uh, let's see if I can get this battle done. Yeah, so the Yusugi have retreated from Shinano. And then it's going to be yeah, 240 versus 240. Now, it looks like they do not have... A good general. They re they actually retreated from Mutsu like with their with their daimyo because he starts off in the castle and then he moves to Daiwa. It's so weird. It's so weird. Like I don't know why they do that. But yeah, there's no, there's going to be no daimyo here for the Isugi clan. It's just my one star general versus their geo star general, and then troops are even numbered. I do think that they have more archers though. I think they have three groups of archers and then one infantry. In any case, let's get into it and see what I can do. Ooh, and rain is an option. Yes, rain is an option. Hmm. Because if they do have more archers than me, then I do want to decrease the effectiveness of their arrows. But I also have archers. That's the thing. Like, um, hmm. Yeah, that's kind of a tough call. I think I will wait and see if I can get, like, maybe more rain. Huh, rain with bright patches. It's kind of complicated. That means that like the sun's gonna come out and sometimes it's gonna be sunny and sometimes it's gonna be a rainy. Um, hmm. 
Yeah, that's kind of compl complicated. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna just give it a shot. See what happens here. My general is gonna be my Yari Samurai, so I have to, you know, somehow be careful with the units that's gonna be like, you know, in com melee combat. And so the enemy is gonna be off to the right here in this forest, which, you know, is gonna be a tough for me to remove them because they're in a forest. So the way I like to do this is to go all the way around the side and then all the way, all the way around this side and just kind of keep even slash like a little bit a little bit of high ground over on this side and try to slowly inch my way around the sides and try to draw the enemy out of the forest. So that's what I like to do. Although, although, the enemy does react to different weather. Like they actually will change their strategy and their positioning based on the weather. So I wonder if um, by doing this and choosing to fight in the rain, I wonder, I wonder if that would change their strategies at all. I guess I'll find out. Alright, that's all good. And let's just get everyone. Just group them up. Put them off to the side. I want to go wide, wide around this way. Because I don't want to get caught, like, here. And then they come out and start shooting at me. That's not what I want to happen. I'm going to go all the way around. And... Let's see. I just want to make sure... So usually when you see birds over a forested area, that means that there's going to be soldiers there. But I do, there we go, there's the general. I see the general is in an archer unit. But the rest of the army is gonna be hidden until I get closer. And those birds are making me nervous because they wouldn't do, I feel like I've never seen the enemy in that forest when I've played this battle before. If this is the first campaign that you've watched uh, from this channel, then I can talk a little bit about the way that I like to group up my armies so, in this case, I like to use the key groups, or the number groups, to kind of number lock my armies. So that any time I want to select, you know, in my rightmost group is going to be group 1. So my archers and my general. And I just, you know, do control 1 to select them. To make a group, I do control, uh, control shift 1? Oh god, my, my, my brain doesn't know what my fingers know. But yeah, to, uh, to create the group, I think it's control shift one or control shift whatever number you want to do. So if I want to do my leftmost leftmost group, I just do control two. Now I have this, you know, this left flank selected. And as far as how I'm creating these, you know, formations, these very simple formations here. So all of the number keys have a formation attached to them. So like the one is just like a straight line. Two would be infantry forward or like melee forward. Uh, the five key is ranged forward. So that's what I have right now. I have them on five. But if I, for example, if I press two right now, they're gonna switch out just like that automatically and go spears in the front and archers in the back. That way I can switch out as soon as they get into combat very quickly right there. But right now I want archers forward. So I just press the five key and archers gonna go in the front. And that's how I play my battles. That's how I, you know, do my groupings and all that stuff. And I'm gonna, be very very slow about going around the outside edge here and just be very careful because I want to draw the enemy out and have them come to me I don't want to fight in that forest if I can avoid it so I'm gonna be very very careful here about edging around the outside here and I want I'd like to be sort of like here because it's more of a high ground here and I can have them come out of the forest and kind of you know get in this little dip here and that's what's worked for me in the past. Oh, okay. All right. Looks like they, where did they come from? <laughs> okay. So they're not in the forest. They, they had left the forest when I was going around. Wow. Okay. That's very confusing, but I do have a high, high ground advantage and they are out of the forest. So if I can engage them, where are they going? Are they just going to go back to the forest? Or are they going to come up here against me? Wait, what are you guys doing? Okay. Um, hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Are they going to engage me or do I... Are they going to go back to the forest? So yeah, they do have one Yari Samurai and then three archers. And it looks like they're coming right up against me. So, let's do... 
let's try to like come back this way a little bit here and then have you guys there. And let's try to get into position quickly so that we can start getting shots on these Yari Samurai. And if we just have to beat those, you know, the, basically they're one good Yari Sam, they're one good infantry unit. Now, granted, I only have one good melee unit myself, but the Yari Ashigaru can get some flanking attacks down here. So let's get into position here quickly, quickly, quickly. There we go. And let's start getting some shots in on these Yari Samurai. Looks like the rain has stopped right now so that we are gonna, should be getting um, some good shots in here, hopefully. Let's see if my guys can hit them. Looks like they can't hit them right now. <laughs> all right, that's not good. All right, all right, there we go. Now they're starting to take some casualties. Jesus, not, not nearly enough casualties are being dealt right now to this Yari Samurai unit. Now, I'm half tempted to take the charge, basically, with my archers, and then flank with my Ashigaru and my Yari Samurai. Basically, this is how I like to play my campaign, or play my, um, play my battles when I'm using an Ashigaru, there we go, like that, and just flank both sides. These Samurai archers are still Samurai, so they should still do fairly well here. And then we get a flank in with our both both of our melee units here. And at this point, we just have to break those... That one unit there. That unit is running away. And now all we have to do is basically just, you know, run down the rest of these archers. So we get in there. We can start chasing down their archers with our melee units. And then get archers as well. They can keep shooting. And I want these archers to get in the, in the path of their uh, their way that they're gonna run away because as soon as we break them here I want to yeah there you go now they're running away and now I try to get away try to get away try to get here get here get here get here and go and our Ashigaru are faster than them so they should there we go we kill the general and we should get a lot of kills here let's make sure everyone's on engage at will and get as many kills as we can here on this army and you know that wasn't too freaking bad I, I must say that was that. You know, that's like the trickiest part of the, you know, the opening moves for the Hojo clan is this battle. And now that this is take, taken care of, I don't think there's going to be too much trouble dealing with the rest of the Yusugi clan. And that's going to do it. I was not able to run down as many of them as I would have liked. Let's see, that leaves like another, yeah, I think a hundred, a little less than a hundred left in the castle. But I only lost 22 men, and that's not too freaking bad. Yeah, I'll take it. That's pretty clean. And I did pillage 450 Koku. All right. Nice. All right. And yeah, Ito Masanari is now second rank. Good job, man. I, I need it. I need the good generals. All right. Mutsu is not happy. 98% though is not bad. Yeah, 98% is like... It just means that I can't pump, pump up the taxes for harvest season. So I'm not going to be making as much money as I would like, but that's that's okay, I think. Um, what what I could do even is send over a... Like just send an archer unit over, or maybe send over a Yari Samurai. That's going to help out with the population loyalty just for this turn. Now, if you think like, well, yeah, what if they attack Kazuke? Well, yeah, I am worried about Kazuke being attacked, but I do have a castle that's being built there and it's going to be done this turn. So if I do get attacked, then I can simply just retreat to that castle. Well, I can guarantee that Mutu stays, you know, under my control. And how long is this going to last? Three turns? Ugh, three turns is a It's a lot. But I don't really want to attack the castle. I don't want to attack it because there's... It's like all archers, you know? They're going to shoot me. <laughs> so, I might just wait the three turns. Yeah. Not ideal, for sure, but... Hmm. And I think... Let's see. Yeah, they do have some forces here in Echigo, for sure. Huh. That's the thing, they could counterattack me, but I feel like I have not been counterattacked before, like during this campaign. Like, once I've taken Mutsu, they just 
kind of way for me to kill them, is what I've experienced from the Yasugi clan. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm right about that. You know, by weakening Kazuge, maybe they will feel like they can attack me here, which they very certainly could. I think I could use a Yari Sam right here in that case. Because I do, yeah, I have a castle being built here in Masashi. So if I do get attacked in Kazuke, I could just, you know, retreat into the castle and then reinforce from Musashi because I will have a castle here as well. I can just leave one unit to defend here and I can also bring units from Mutsu. That's what's kind of cool about Mutsu is that this, this is a weird province that reaches all the way over and borders Kazuke. So I can reinforce from Musashi and Mutsu if anyone attacks here, which is nice. I like that little geometry there. It's kind of cool. Now let's get, yeah, I got an archer being trained up. Yes. And let's see. I want to find someone to make friends with. So I guess go over to Kai, I guess. wonder where the Takeda Daimyo is. I wonder where the Imagawa Daimyo is. Because these clans both have split territories. They both have territories either down here in Aki or down here in Kyushu. So it might be a little bit tricky to find the Daimyo to uh, get an alliance proposal. But we will see. We're going to try try doing that. And let's see, is there anything I want to spend money on right now? Obviously, I'm going to spend 600 or 300 Koku on archers. Anything else? Like, I should. I should definitely spend some money. Um, hmm. How much is this mine? Mine's going to cost 500. No. Is that not, not there? And I'm building the... Improved farmland here in Hitachi. I could build another improved farmland here in Masashi if I feel like it's not going to be attacked. The thing is, is that even though I can hold on to territories by retreating into my castles, that still leaves the infrastructure itself vulnerable to being destroyed. For instance, here in Mutsu, I took the province, but they still have troops that are here in this castle. But as you saw, I pillaged 450 Koku, and as you can see, there's no buildings here. I destroyed them all, which is where that money came from. That happens kind of automatically once provinces are taken, not necessarily once the castle is taken. So sure, I can retreat into castles in Musashi and Kazuke once those castles are built, but any infrastructure that's built in these provinces will be vulnerable to being, you know, essentially raided by neighboring forces here in the Takeda and the Imagawa and even the Yasugi. So building that improved farmland in Masashi is a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit dicey just because it's still kind of a contested territory for now. Once I have like a decent, you know, force there, sure, easy, done. I will, I will definitely, you know, build many, many improved farmlands here in Masashi because it's going to be worth it. But I think for now, you know, Shimosa's, Shimosa's worth it. 290 farm income, that's worth at least one upgrade. Kazuza, 190 farm income, yeah. I'm not going to build any farm upgrades there. But, but, but Shimosa, why the heck not? Hmm. Or a large castle. Ooh, or a large castle. I could do that. Hmm. I can't afford it if I'm going to train up an archer, but... I can afford it. Oh, it's nice. Man, yeah. It's really nice having the discount because I think large castles without the discount cost 500 Koku, but 375. Oh, that's so that's so nice. Um because the so what I'm thinking is the reason why I want this is because a large castle is going to allow me to build a horse dojo which is going to allow me to potentially put my heir Hojo Ujiyasu Inside of a unit that I want him to be in. I don't want him to be on foot. I want him to be on a horse. I've played enough campaigns where I have my heirs on in archer units. The way I did that, I just, I wanted to, at the time I was thinking I wanted to kind of kind of keep my cav, my cav archers as like a Takeda unit. That's the way I like to play this game is I like to play each clans with like different army compositions to kind of make each playthrough special to me. But eventually I decided, after having my heirs run down again and again and again in battle, I just, I, I'm, I'm done. Like, I want my heirs on a horse. It makes sense. I want them survivable. I want them to be able to get away if the battle doesn't go their, you know, go their way. And it just makes freaking sense. I mean, this is royalty for God's sakes. They should be riding a horse. I mean, 
Horse archers were the traditional form of samurai warfare before the Sengoku Jedi, when like, you know, guns and spears became the norm. Before that, it was nobility riding around on horses, shooting at each other with bows and arrows. I want my heir to be a horse archer, but since he's only two, he's two years away before he comes of age, that's tricky unless I can just get a large castle going on turn freaking two. Can I do that? Yeah. Because if I, yeah, yeah, actually. Because if I just train a Yari Samurai instead of an archer, that's gonna leave me with enough money to get a large castle going. I'm gonna take four seasons, or I mean, yeah, four seasons. So four turns before that's done. And then a Horus Dojo. I, I think that would be done like right when my heir becomes of age, maybe. Hmm. We'll see. I'm going to try. I'm going to sacrifice a little bit of economy here. You know, instead of building that improved farm up, uh, what is it called? The improved farmland. I'm going to go for the large castle and try to try to get those um, horses going here. Other than that, I think I'm just going to sit tight for now. Yeah, there's nothing really to, for me to do. I want to try to get an alliance with the Takeda clan and the Imagawa clan. I want to, you know, Get rid of this garrison here, and we'll see if the Yasugi clan decides to retaliate here. Alright, now the castle is finished here in Kuzuke, and Musashi, and no one attacks me. Okay, alright. And two more turns before the garrison in Mutu Falls. The way, yeah, and, and just, yeah, in case you are, like, new to the game, this 20-year-old game, it's... It's always going to be one more turn than whatever seasons it is. So when it says one season, it, that means two turns. The reason why is because after this season, which is the one season, it will then say castle is about to fall. I I don't know. It's confusing, but that's the way that works. So two more turns before this castle falls. And sweet. We had a good harvest. Awesome. I think that's like a 20% or a 25% boost to farm income, which is a nice thing. You, you don't get a lot of them on expert difficulty. They become more and more rare and poor harvests become more and more common, which is why in expert difficulty, you want to rely more on ports for a solid base income in addition to mines, if you can get them, but especially the Christians. You really want the Portuguese trading posts and the churches if you really want a booming economy. Without that, you're just, you're just hurting yourself. And yeah, all right, sweet. That's all looking good. I can put this guy in a layout. And you can hang out here. And yeah, so having one archer defend Kazuke is definitely pretty treacherous, but I think I'm just gonna roll with that for now. Yeah, it's just it's just the um the daimyo hanging out here in Dewa. It's just him. So what I can do is once this garrison's taken care of, I can just leave like one unit here in Mutsu and or, no, or I can just attack Echigo and Deo at the same time. You know? Like, that. yeah, that's that's something, that's definitely a potential avenue. The river battles can be tricky, but as long as I bring, you know, enough archers, that should be fine. And this is the Yusugi's heir right here, the three-star three -star general. They are one of those lucky clans. Well, I think the only, no, the Yoda clan and the Yasugi clan are the only clans that start off with an heir already of age, which is a pretty nice for them. These are them a nice bonus general. All right, is there, um, is there a daimyo here? Oh, yeah, the daimyo is just hanging out here in Kai. All right. Let's try to get an alliance with the Takeda. That would be pretty swell. And let's see, Arch or Archer no, Yari Samurai. All right, Yari Samurai, go up here to Shimotsuke and just kind of be in the middle. <laughs> and eventually we will reinforce Mutsu with that. And got a decent bit of money now. All right. So, hmm. More money than I know what to do with. <laughs> All right, let's. I definitely, okay, definitely soldiers, right? Definitely just do this. So that's going to be 600, 800, 1,000. That's, that's 1,000 Koku for this entire year's worth. So what else? What else do I want? Um, Hitachi can probably start. Yeah, they're still working on an improved farmland. Okay, well, never mind. What about... 
I can just get that mine going in Shimotsuke. It's a copper mine, so it's not like, you know, a ton of money, but I still think it's... What is it? Is it 200 per, per year for copper? And then, what, 400 for silver and 600 for gold? Is that right, or am I, am I off? 200's not bad, you know? For a building that costs 500 koku, that's, that's a really good return on investment. And on investment. Hmm. Four seasons, yeah. I think, yeah, that's, that's the play. Build a mine. That still leaves me with a thousand koku. Um, anything else? Because I want Itachi to be basically like a true producing facility, right? Because this, this has my iron sands deposits here. So I want to build armored troops here, and I will eventually, you know, be going for cavalry here in Chimosa, just because that's the fastest place I can get it. And, hmm. I do want to get ports as well, obviously. Maybe that's the... Get a port, but yeah, that's... If I'm going to build a port, I may as well build improved farmland. Like, I was thinking about Masashi because I already have a castle there. Hmm. Maybe I just hang tight. <laughs> Maybe I don't spend all my money. I, I don't know. I, I want to, but... I feel like I need more soldiers out on the field first. Before I can really improve, you know, really invest in my infrastructure, I need more soldiers. And... Right now, I can only train soldiers in Shimosa, so I should probably just stop, you know, stop being so anxious and just freaking do it that way. So, all right. Anything else I need to do? I think I'm still just going to chill out. Yep, train soldiers, build a mine. Yeah. All right. Tons of soldiers in Shinano. Jesus, Imagawa. Imagawa's looking scary. And one more turn before this uh, garrison in Mutsu Falls. And the Emperor in Kyoto has declared his support for the Oda clan. He demands that all other daimyo should cease pointless hostilities and unite behind a new Oda shogunate. All of that means is that the, you know, the Oda clan took Yamashiro, which is where the capital is. It, it doesn't really mean anything. Yamashiro offers a plus one honor bonus to all units, including agents that are trained there, which is, that's a nice thing for sure. But other than that, taking Yamashiro doesn't mean anything else. And the Oda clan has such a hard time. There's so many rebels in central Japan, like the Oda clan just gets spanked. It's, uh, it's such, it's such the opposite of actual history. All right, let's get, um, hmm. Do I need him in Mutsu? I, I guess not, because I can, that's the thing. If I'm going to attack Echigo and Deo at the same time, I can just, you know, bring him from Kazuke into Echigo and send the rest of the soldiers up here to kill the Daimyo, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I like that, because I think what I might do then is just use my archers and then like one Ashigaru and like, well, like maybe this Yari Samurai to take Echigo. And then just sent two Yari Samurai to <laughs> kill the Daimyo? Yeah, I guess. Would they would he even fight me though? I don't know. I might just retreat. And I'm pretty sure <sighs> the Daimyo, he has he only has ten bodyguards. And there's no way they can't beat two units of Yari Samurai, could they? I don't think so. These are pretty healthy units, you know. This unit only my general only has well I can just do that. There we go. Now my, gen now my general's completely healthy. Yeah, those are pretty healthy units right there. Hmm. I can bring up another archer. Ooh, another one-star general. Hey, Minigawa Kagemochi. Or Kagemochi. Mochi. Kagemochi. Maybe what I do is... How many turns before this falls? It's this turn, right? Yeah, it's going to fall this turn. So maybe... Um... Hmm, bring him up to Shimotsuke. Actually, maybe bring him to Musashi. Just to kind of reinforce here. Yeah, get some more soldiers here. I really don't want Takeda to attack me. And I couldn't... Uh, see, I couldn't... Get an alliance, come on. Come on, man. Imagawa's looking scary for sure. Yeah. I don't want them to attack me either. 
Not not even like I like I'm sure I can defend against Takeda Inimagawa, but I just basically I just want to not have the wars to begin with. Because once you're in a war, it takes a while to like convince them to not be in a war anymore, you know? So the idea is to look strong. Just look strong. In the beginning of a campaign, you just want soldiers on your borders to look, you know, like you can mess them up mess them up. And as long as you can look that way, they won't attack. But I'm kind of worried that my borders are a little bit filmsy right now just because I'm focusing on this attack on the Imagawa, or I'm sorry, the Yusugi clan. Hmm. Well, let's just cross our fingers and hope that that remains okay. And yeah, is there anything else? Like, do I want to, do I want to build, so I can build something next turn here in Itachi. So I'll do that. Build a castle, I guess, in Itachi. Yeah. And I can start building buildings in Mutsu as well next turn because I will own it. So I can, I don't know. I'll, I'll see what I want to do. It's, it's a good thing I saved money because I will have built, I mean, I will be able to spend it eventually here, you know? So that's okay. All right, so I think I'm just gonna keep, yeah, just keep, oops, not that. I just wanted to see. All right, that's all good. And yeah, so my air is on 15, so one more year before. And it's always spring. He always comes of age in spring. Like that's always the season that they were born in. So it's gonna be spring of next year where he's going to come of age, which means that's going to be exactly four turns from now. That's pretty tight because it's two more turns before this large castle's built. And then how many turns before the horse dojo? Is it like three maybe? So I might be like one turn too late. So I would have to basically spend one turn without training any soldiers, which is usually not smart to do. But if I really do want my heir to be in a horse archer unit, then maybe it's going to be worth it. In any case, all right, let's just end the turn. Keep going here. Improve farmland. Finish in Hitachi. And the castle in Mutsu has fallen. All right. And that, god damn it, that freaking dude wouldn't accept an alliance with me. He regrets that he cannot make the commitment at this time. All right, I know how that feels. Now, let's go up here and try to get an alliance with the Imagawa clan. Let's see. Oh yeah, and I just, this is something I like to show people uh, when, when I get a chance. Because the daimyos in this game actually have like a personality written for them. Uh, by the developers, it kind of like distinguishes how each clan plays because there is a different personality here. For the Takeda clan, Takeda Nobutoro, or Nobutora, and this is Takeda Shingen's father, this daimyo specializes in the use of highly mobile and heavily armed forces to sweep foes from the battlefield. This strategy involves large cavalry formations, heavy armor, and high quality weaponry. It can lead to unbalanced armies, and this is an inherent weakness. He is expansionist and not particularly trustworthy. So that plays into the whole diplomacy game with him. Like, the Kid, the kid Clan just, you know, cannot be trusted in this game. But that's okay. I find as long as, like, my borders are strong, they're not going to attack me. So I just wanted Alliance so that I can get that money, frankly. That's all, that's all I care about. Hey, two-star general. Hey, Ota Yasusuke. Sweet, man. All right, I'm starting to get some generals out here. Hmm. So, where do I want you, good sir? I mean... So there's two units here in Sagami, probably like another four in this army, and then like another two, it look, looks like. So yeah, it's like eight, eight units on my border here. Hmm. I should probably bring him. I should probably do that. Yeah. I don't want to look weak. That's the that's the whole thing here. I don't want to look weak. And Yeah. All right. Now, oh, damn, damn, damn. This is the This is the unfortunate side effect of CG now to castle. This doesn't happen every time, but the trade-off 
between not losing any men and attacking that castle is that the castle itself is destroyed. It's gone. So, you know, luckily I have a discount for building castles, which is nice, but that does take, you know, two turns. That's time that's wasted. So that's something that has to be decided on. You know, you either waste the lives of your men or you spend the lives of your men to save two turns, two seasons worth of, you know, building a castle back, not to mention the money that it costs to build the castle back. So that is the trade-off. And yeah, it's the thing is, though, it doesn't always happen. It, it's really like it feels like at least it feels like it doesn't. For those of you who, you know, really know this game, does it is it is it a guaranteed thing? Because I, I think maybe I don't notice it so much like in the late game because it's always losing a tier. Like a level two castle will lose a tier and go to level one, you know? So I just don't notice the castle being like disappearing because I'm not really paying attention to it. Is it a guaranteed thing that castles either either destroyed or lose a tier if they're sieged out? Or is it just kind of a random chance sort of thing? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But in any case, it's really tempting at this point to go on the attack here. Because I can... I can send two healthy units of spears to go and fight just the daimyo here in Dewa. And I can send two archers and an Ashigaru to fight here in Echigo. It looks like they have four units though, plus a three-star general. So I'd probably want to bring... I wonder if they have any archers. They have to. I think they're. I think the heirs in an archer unit actually. So I'd probably want to bring a Yari Samurai. Do I want to do this though? Is this too early? That's a decent looking army here, you know, from the Imagawa clan. But the thing is, is that I don't want them to attack Echigo. You know, I want to take this before they do. So yeah, I think I think going for the battle here. I think that's the smart thing to do. What I do know is that I do want to get castles going here in Hitachi and Mutsu right away. Although oh Mutsu is so rich though. Oh, it's so tempting. Farm income. Six hundred Koku. Man oh man. Like, do I really need a castle right now? Like, what would I need it for, you know? At least in Itachi, I want a castle. Like, obviously, so I can start getting an armory going eventually and start training soldiers there. But in Mutsu... I don't really need the castle because I'm just going to be attacking y the Yusugi clan pretty soon. If, like, not right now, you know? So I don't know if I really need that castle. Maybe instead, I get the improved farmland. And that's going to save me enough money so that I can still build that that um, that horse dojo here in Shimosa next turn once the castle once the large castle's finished here. Yeah, I think that's the play. And as far as attacking Echigo and Dewa, man, that's a, that's a tough choice. I think just because the Imagawa and the Takeda are both looking somewhat strong on my borders. It's, it's a tough call. I really want to take it, though, before, you know, they take it. I don't want the Imagawa clan to take Echigo and then force a war against me. That would suck. But you would think that they, like... I know that AI is really hesitant to attack river provinces, so I might have, like, an extra turn or two to, like, get ready for it, you know? Hmm. Or I just go for it. I think that's going to be the play. I think I just go for it this turn and actually just attack with this Yori Samurai and then these units here. I wouldn't have like any, you know, generals, which is not, that's not good. Is that what I do? Should I bring this general? I have a two-star general here, but I want him to go after the daimyo here. Maybe that's what I do, but in any case, I'm going to leave that for the next episode. So I just want to say, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I've been Condestep, and this has been Shogun Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye.